just thank you everyone like for having me on here as um I'm an eye clinic liaison officer. Some of you I may have spoke to during um, Wolfram Clinic, some may not. But today I'm just going to give an overview from a benefits aspect and also some grant information. I don't know if people missed this. Um, I didn't go into probably either as little or more detail that I did in September when I done the conference, but we'll see how we get on. And as I say, I think Trace is monitoring the chat, which while I'm multitasking of holding a phone and speaking to yourselves as well as reading from uh, what I've typed up. So if anybody wanted this information afterwards, it is on a Word document that can be enlarged. Um, so I can always hand it over to Tracy afterwards and it is being recorded. So a lot of questions around benefits. Some people ask what are means tested benefits? Means tested benefits are ones that could be like pension credit, housing benefit, council tax support and cold weather payment. And there where something like, say, PIP, personal independent payment, is an extra income on top of somebody even working and earning a salary. But means-tested ones are where you've already got an income coming in um, or they take into consideration savings. So I'm going to go through this with you. So some types of income are fully considered when assessing whether you're eligible to claim a means-tested benefit but others, such as if you receive attendance allowance, that one's ignored. And as I said about PIP, but they do take into consideration as well your partner's income and any capital um, which may be taken into account. And what I mean by capital is, as I've just explained, ben um, savings, let's get it right. <laughs> um, so it can be things like whether you've got any stocks and shares, whether there's any shares of savings jointly, if there's any property other than your own home, premium bonds, national savings, or any lump sum payments. So unfortunately, whether it's somebody's passed away and they've given you any inheritance money or a state pension. So your income and say a capital must be below a certain limit for you to be able to claim any means tested benefits. And this is obviously set by the government and there's estimated amounts. So each benefit can be different eligibility criteria, and it all depends on if there is any income already coming in and what then you'll be able to meet and what you can claim. So if, for instance, housing benefit and council tax support, if you have a lower amount of £10,000 or you have an upper amount limit of £16,000, and what they say is if you have less than £10,000, then you'll be able to claim the full benefit. If you have between £10,000 and £16,000, then you'll be able to get a reduced amount. As I say, they work it out all different. I'm just giving you an overview. So if there was anything that you don't feel you're getting the right amounts or anything, or um, you wasn't previously because you did have any savings, but now they've been reduced, then it's worth getting reviews and seeing if you can be entitled to either more or if it's unfortunately less. If there's more than 16,000, then it's more than likely that you wouldn't be able to claim whether it's housing benefit or a council tax reduction. You've then got pension credit. Now I'm covering pension credit because I'm not saying you're all old and I'm not saying you're certainly all young, but I don't know obviously what age of people we've got on here. So it may apply to some people, it may not. But with pension credit, there's actually no upper limit for pension credit um, that you can receive obviously a reduced amount but if you do have um, 10,000 that's where they may although they're saying there's no upper limit they may but for every 500 or part of every 500 pound that is saved you'll be treated as having a deemed income of one pound a week so this is then any other income it can be added such as the pension so you've got your pension obviously coming in but pension credit is can be a top up so there's like a means tested benefits that i just wanted to do an overview on see so for registration um in general if people are registered with their site there is additional benefits for sight impaired and severely sight impaired some are the same but with severely sight impaired you do get three extra entitlements while we're on um, the subject of means tested benefits, I will jump to that part. I was going to save it till last, but I will do that now so it's covered. So, 
additional benefits that aren't means tested would be attendance allowance it would then be um disability what used to be sorry disability living allowance is now personal independent payment unless you're some of the lucky few that haven't gone over to it um personal independent payment pip then isn't means tested as i've explained about the means tested ones above the other things that you can be entitled to for visual impairment severely sight impaired if you're working or you pay tax then there's a blind person's tax allowance that means you can earn an extra 2500 on top of somebody that doesn't have um, severely sight impaired registration in place you've then got tv license now tv license Again, I'm going to cover further up, but just to give a, a brief overview, if you're registered partially sighted, you don't qualify, but for severely sight impaired, you do qualify. Blue badge is, again, something I'm going to cover because, again, you don't get it for partial registration, um, but you do um, meet the criteria for severely sight impaired. But I've got some additional information on top of blue badge on you may have Wolfram syndrome and have no visual problems but you may be entitled then to a blue badge from a different aspect. So I've brought that on to today, which I didn't previously cover, but I thought it would be beneficial to raise. There is um, articles for the blind, so that's for both severely sight impaired and sight impaired, that you can send postage um, letters at free of charge for yourselves to additional members of the family or um, organisations. From an eye aspect, everybody always asks if you can get any coverage towards um, prescription glasses if um, you do need them prescribed. Unfortunately, from a registration point of view, you can't. But the only thing it does entitle you to is a reduction of a free NHS eye examination. That's the only thing you're covered with, unfortunately, not for the price of frames um, or lenses under registration. You are entitled to a free bus pass on either criteria and then there is the disabled rail card which that is the last time I checked it was £20 for a year or £40 for three years and that covers not just the individual but a companion travelling with them to reduce costs. There's a cinema pass, um, a lot of people may not go to the cinema because of unfortunately thinking that they won't be able to see the screen but if you're not aware there is audio description films that are out there that you can go to if you do buy the cinema card that gives concession rates um, but again that is a purchase that has to be made if not you can just turn up to a show that you want unfortunately probably not for some in this pandemic um, but when they are in audio description not saying you have to go to audio description but just to make you aware that there are films out there available the personal independent payments pip that i mentioned um disability living allowance if you're under 16 and then over 65 is attendance allowance there are extra incomes of care and mobility and are based at different rates if you do get approved any of them then there is carers allowance on top of that that somebody can claim on your behalf as long as you're in receipt of either DLA, PIP, um, attendance allowance. ESA um, now falls under universal credits for some people, which I'm going to cover again further up. So that will give you an overview. And again, going back to um, housing benefit and council tax reductions, they are means tested, but it is something that you could be um, topped up and entitled to. So that's an overview of sight impaired and severely sight impaired benefits that you can get. I like to make sure that if patients are registered that they're entitled to, to them or making sure that they are getting them. The other thing that I've mentioned previously um, and I'm covering again today is home warmth and I've got some additional information since last time. So home warmth is a government discount and it's a one-off payment of £140 applied to eligible customers for electricity bills. Now at the moment they're saying, <coughs> sorry, hold on. <coughs> so
sorry about that i think i'm safe now <laughs> and the home warmth discount so um they're saying now that sometime between october and april so it's been designed to help reduce costs for those with a visual um impairment and on living low income or pension oh, though they say over the winter months it's a one-off payment and it's whenever you choose to use it not all suppliers participate so to make you aware that unfortunately if your gas or electricity provider is not in this scheme then unfortunately i apologize but also i don't expect you to go to the moving of your electricity provider just for the discount that has to be on your own accord if you do want that um however there is a lot of suppliers that already um put in this scheme so they brought it in um more suppliers have came in since 2019 and 2020 if you're not already part of it then more are going to be rolled in as well from 2020 to 2021 but it's always important to check before i'm not saying switch um, but check your provider if you don't have it in place now anybody who qualifies for the home warmth as i said you'd receive a 140 pound contribution towards the electric um, energy bills they say now it won't be made directly to you if you're direct debit then your direct debits will be tweaked so you get the reduction however if you are on a meter you do find that they credit your meter 140 pound and then until you, you've used that then you won't need to top up and once it's gone you can top up as usual now the way i'm just scrolling down as we speak the way that this works is you um they can do it on a dual fuel but there is some that do it for a single plan as well so if you're unsure whether you're dual fuel or whether you're on a single plan and it's just gas one provider and electricity it's worth asking the way that they do it is core group is one so under the core group you must meet the following requirements and that is your energy supplier is part of the scheme you or your partner's name is on the electricity bill now i didn't mention that last time so either yourself or a partner has to be on the electricity bill you receive the guarantee credit eliminate of whether it's pension credit as well if it's that or if you're on a low rate income or any other support if you're eligible for the core group they're saying that you should receive a letter from the dwp that tells you about it now if the other group is the broader group and this is where they say it's slightly more complicated as you have to apply directly to your supplier for the discount and it's as i say it's on their rules and again their criteria are that you're in receipt of income related employment support allowance or you have a pension premium which the pension premium would be that you get pension credit but you get the premium part to it because of a, a disability so that's where i wanted to cover the home warmth aspect um previously as i know before i wasn't told that it had to cover the individual um being as the named person i thought that it was the certificate of registration as long as it was in that name but i do believe now it has to be yourself or your partner to receive that and they will want a copy of your registration universal credits that's as i said now falls under an umbrella of various different benefits so that is a means tested benefit and that rolled out from december 2018 nationally some people might have been brought over before but actually it's came into place more as i say um, nationally it will eventually replace the below benefits but they're migrating it i suppose it's like a bit like a postcode lottery they'll just do it as and when and you've got income based job seekers allowance income related employment support allowance housing benefit income support working tax credit child tax credit now if you're already on them and you haven't been rolled over you remain on them then that's okay but just bear in mind that you could roll over eventually under universal credit you'll still receive um it what it used to be classed as so let's use just use housing benefit but it may show up one time as a payment as universal credit uh, da, da, da. i'm just scrolling down i apologize 
so it, they, you will be notified as well of when that will happen so if you are currently receiving um, any of the benefits I mentioned you will receive them as normal and continue to and it's only when either the tax credits office or if you're under a local job center they'll let you know when your benefit will be replaced for most people making a new benefit though so if you haven't been on any of them previously if it's a new benefit then you will go under universal credit a lot of people ask then how much could I get well, universal credit will all depend on a different factors. So it could be either how much you earn, because sometimes universal credit is topped up from a tax credit point of view. But also, again, it's means tested. So it goes off savings if you do have any. The basic standard allowance for universal credits is, though, we've got £409.89 per month. That's if you're single. 594.04 per month if you're a couple again this is just a basic standard allowance every individual is different when they apply for it on what they can and can't receive they also on top of the standard allowance you could be entitled to extra money if you have housing costs a disability or a health condition caring responsibilities to a disabled person dependent children, childcare costs, whereas universal credit is paid monthly and the payment you can get each month will depend, as I said, on how much you earn in the previous month as well and if there's any change on circumstances. So if you are eligible or you think you may be eligible for universal credit, they say that you must be under state pension age, have a low income or are out of work, have savings below 16000 live in the UK, accept a claimant commitment. So you can't receive universal credits if you're already receiving a certain benefit. So if at the moment that you're already on ESA, you could remain on that. But if you went into work and then unfortunately lost work and had to go back on benefits, doesn't mean then that you're going to remain back on your ESA, be able to get back onto it. That's where you'll fall under um, universal credits so if you're already on some of them at the moment then if they haven't took you over to it you'll remain the other way that they look at it is if you're a mixed age couple meaning on again any pension if you're over pension pension age get my words out today but the other is under you will need to claim universal credits rather than pension credit You've also got if you're a mixed age couple and already received pension credit, you can remain doing so for as long as you're entitled to it. So if there is various ages um, within a relationship, then they may go off, as I say, instead of if you meet state pension age, the individual will have to claim it under the younger individual universal credit rather than state pension. But if it's the other way around and they're already in receipt of it, um, then you'd remain on that. The TV licence reduction that, as some of you may be aware, as of August, over 75s used to have the TV licence free of charge. They've now brought in that you don't get it free of charge unless, bear with me, let's scroll down. There's various types of TV licence discounts now. So for those that are over 75 used to get it free from a visual impairment aside, especially severely sight impaired. Now, if you've already paid full price, I would advise obviously ask for the refund for the half. If it's not due to be renewed yet, then you need to inform them that you're registered severely sight impaired. Anybody under 75 that has previously been paying full price, if you have, you are entitled to it at half price with your copy of the document so the ways that they offer discount and also I'm covering about care homes and sheltered accommodation just in case anybody is in any residential living or sheltered living. So the ways the discount for TV license is if you're at least 75 years old and receive pension credit, you can claim a free TV license. So again, although they're bringing in the cost 75 years and over, if you are on pension credit, you can still get it free, though. The free TV license will cover you and anyone else you live with, no matter what age they are. So as long as the individual claiming it is 75, anybody else living with them under is still basically in receipt of it. It only costs that one individual.
If you're blind or have a severe impairment, you can claim 50% discount on your license. If you live with someone, the license will need to be in the name of the person who is blind or sight, severely sight impaired to get the discount. If you're living in a care home or sheltered housing, you can get an accommodation or residential care license, which is called the ARC, and that costs £7.50. You only need this if you watch TV in your own separate accommodation. So it's not if you only watch TV in the common areas, so a common room um, that may be a t like a TV residence lounge. So how do you claim it if you haven't got it in place? If you're 75 years and older and receive the pension credit, you need to apply for the free TV license as it's not given out automatically. There is the application form that you can use online or there is a contact number, um, which I will say for the purpose of the recording, but 0300 790 6117. If you're blind or partially sighted, well, I don't know why they put partially sighted in there. That's an error. If you're blind or severely sight impaired, contact the TV license and once you're registered on the system, each time you won't need to renew it because it will be at the concessionary rate, but you must provide them with a photocopy of the certificate of the document um, and then obviously the application form and then the discounted fee. If you're living in a care home um, or a sheltered housing, you can contact the warden staff or managing authority who you live with, who can apply for it with you. But to qualify for that, you must be retired at age 60 or over or disabled so that's more the care home than the sheltered the blue badge you should automatically qualify for a blue badge if one or more of the criteria apply for you so if you do get the higher rate of the mobility component of disability living allowance or as it's pip you can claim personal independent payment because you can't walk more than 50 meters if you receive a war pensions mobility supplement you're a registered severely sight impaired or blind person you have received a lump sum benefit from the armed forces so if you've done service you have a permanent and substantial disability which means you are unable to walk or have very considerate difficulty in walking you may have to show this in a criteria part of the form and if you back it up with medical evidence now if you don't automatically qualify, which if anybody is registered sight impaired, as I said, you don't automatically qualify. But if you are, you always advise my patients, if you do feel that you'd warrant a blue badge, there is um, various criteria then of ways you can go down the route of. So if you don't qualify because you're partial sighted and not severely sight impaired, if you have walking problems, including problems that are caused by a hidden disability so it could be things like dementia mental health problems you have a severe disability in both arms which means you have considerable difficulty operating parking meters you often become extremely anxious or fearful <clears throat> excuse me or public spaces you, you don't manage in you have a terminal illness which means you can't walk or find walking very difficult you can contact your local council to check now if you are partially sighted have put this bit in and you do not receive any of the above benefits but you do have another long-term medical condition affecting your mobility you may be eligible for a blue badge but you will have to fill in an extra part of the application to show why you need one it will be then assessed and you'll be notified by a decision so that is all what I wanted to cover um, from the benefits aspect and from a grants aspect there's various grants out there that do provide support to people with a visual impairment and of course because visual impairment is the role I work in as an eye clinic liaison officer there's a couple of grants I've picked out from that aspect so if you're aware of any under different medical conditions then that are not sight loss related then i apologize i've just gone from the sight aspect so the florence nightingale trust application is for people of all ages with poor health or are disabled and require medical items or services to improve quality of life they can consider items such as medical aids computers specialist software 
sensory equipment and communication aids. The Independence at Home grant is applications for long-term illness or disability, items such as specialist disability equipment, home adaptations, it could be kitchen equipment, it may be a bed or bedding and communication equipment they provide. The Gardener's Trust grant, um, I've used them a couple of times, they do it a lot for education or training they do it for computer equipment and software and can cover various household items. They specifically are VI based, so visually impaired, and that's for registered people of sight impaired or severely sight impaired. I do have a total here that the maximum they go up to is £600. There's the League of the Helping Hand, which is grants all ages they cover with illness or disabilities. And they do household items such as washing machines, specialist equipment, cookers and fridge. Victor is quite a local grant um, to the Birmingham area and their grants for visually impaired under 29. So that one is just up to 29 years old. And they do visual impairment aids, equipment. They can look at laptops, um, so more practical equipment, braille readers, CCTV readers, and they provide holiday schemes as well. The RNIB, their points are, for the grants they provide, that you must live in the UK, you're registered as sight impaired or severely sight impaired, you receive a means tested benefit, so if you do get housing benefit, the income related ESA, you're on universal credits, um, they're more specific on what you do um, get by and also if you've been refused by, by the council and not had the funding through them but I've got to be honest with you a lot of councils won't provide the equipment that you're asking for if there is a council out there and you've been fortunate enough then it's great to hear but a lot of the councils they will just come out if they do a home assessment and provide a liquid level indicator or a talking clock they won't go to the degree that before well, from patients, they've got visual impairment, they may have the diabetic um, monitors. If, if you're doing your own um, diabetic readings and have to get them through, a laptop would be so beneficial for you to be able to remain independent and send the results if you don't have somebody that could do that for you. So the RNIB um, can provide up to £500 worth of grants. You've got to make sure that you haven't had a grant in three years and you haven't got savings above £6,000. Now, if you've had a grant from them within three years, then unfortunately you can't put another one through. But if you haven't, um, then you can go, go through them. The, means, the not means tested one um, is something like the contribution based ESA. Or, or PIP, um, they won't allow grant applications. So if you are, as I say, in receipt of a means tested benefit, then you can go through the RNIB. They also do not just a laptop I mentioned, they've got magnifiers, talking microwaves, big button telephones. So there's so much um, available. So from a grant, Tracy, I haven't filled the whole hour in case there's any, I know there was two questions that originally come through from the benefits i think we're on about 40 minutes so far but that's what i had planned and discussed <laughs> lovely thanks talia so yeah the questions that i'd had come through were um can you support ws families individuals with grant applications or with applying for grants so as i'm clinic based usually um usually although i'm remotely working due to the current pandemic every grant obviously can take various amounts of time unfortunately i can't but i can refer to benefit support who can help people fill in the forms or um although i've got a document on grants available that i can share further additional support as you say of of filling them in and helping i would refer on okay lovely thank you and then the other one was um, most grant organisations require professionals to fill in forms. Can you support WS families or individuals with this? So again, quite similar to the, the first question, I, I can't and also with more going into detail from a professional, I am non-medical as an eye clinic liaison officer and only support from 
that I point of view. So I wouldn't hold enough knowledge myself on Wolfram to take that in because they'd require a lot of support for each individual. So I would advise Dr. Wright, who supports the clinics, would be the main person to approach because even if you've not been able to meet him face to face, whether it's been virtually, he would still hold all the information from the individual. If there is anybody in the Wolfram charity um, that supports with this, obviously I'd signpost that way. What I can do though, to turn a bit of a negative into a positive, is I can do a brief supported letter. So if for instance, somebody said to me that, Talia, I'm done a grant form, but I need a supporting statement. It doesn't have to come from an actual professional. I would then do something in the aspect of I'm writing to support, I use my own name, Talia, in applying for a laptop. I can confirm this person is registered, sight impaired or severely sight impaired and has Wolfram syndrome. That's what I would put in because I'd be aware that it was Wolfram syndrome and I've mentioned the eyesight. I could then put that the individual, obviously using a name, it would be struggles on a day-to-day -day basis, X, Y, Z, and obtaining a laptop will retain independence and build it up in whatever way the individual told me that they needed that for support. So I can do, you know, a brief supporting letter, but to go into fine details of actually explaining the ins and outs of the whole condition, that would where it have to come from. I don't want to say a stronger professional and knock my own standards of my role, but somebody with more in-depth knowledge of Wolfram. Okay, lovely. Um, I've had a question come in in chat. It um, says, um, who do we contact in, it says, HSE for funding, please? I've asked them to clarify that unless you know. And then how do we use the tax system for NCBI for funding? I might, m Natalie, Gavin, it might be easier if you unmute and you can ask Talia yourself. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> No, it's just that we've tried different channels here. And each time we just keep getting told no such thing. You no, just have to... There's no funding available. Which charities are you approaching for funding? Oh, we've tried the Nas National Nas Council, Council for, for the Blind. blind. Um, we've gone through our local county councils. We've gone through Anne Sullivan Foundation. We've gone through a deaf society which is called Chime. We've just and tried so many different ones and especially for like laptops or anything like that, they just tell me to go and pay for it myself. That there is nothing. Did you say you've tried the Royal National Inst the R and I B? No, because we live in Ireland, it's N C B I. Okay. The, um, the RNIB, though, are national-based. I do speak to people. I don't know which part you are in, like, um, Belfast. Yeah, see, we're Southern Ireland. Belfast still comes under the UK. Oh, uh, OK, so you're out. I'm more than happy to do some research and ask, because I'm, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not sure on the benefit difference for Ireland. Yeah. especially yeah. the southern part where you, where you're saying you are but i'm more than happy you know to speak to individuals um and professionals that i'm aware of on the on the border i suppose of yourselves and see if they've got any better knowledge on top of what you've already been provided with and somebody different yeah no that'd be great that'd be thanks and once I've got it, I can feed it back to Tracy and then Tracy could, um, you know, pass it over if that's okay. Sorry, Tracy, to use you as like the middleman. <laughs> oh, that'd be perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Has anyone Very much. any any questions that they'd like to ask? Nothing coming up in chat. Okay, well, in that's the case and Ossie um thank you for joining thank you Talia for uh doing this for us um and uh